by the Kamakawa Prom Mayor, the beautiful city of Perth Amboy. It is a beautiful morning having each of you here with us. I want to thank everyone for gathering here today at the community center for our announcement of a much needed park improvement to the Veterans Memorial Health Youth Complex located at 601 Dorothy Avenue, right here in our beautiful city. The weather may have relocated us here, but we all bring the sunshine. This is a beautiful day. We will invite you all back to its grand opening and the groundbreaking of our new complex. First, I want to acknowledge several dignitaries and distinguished guests that are here with us today. Our governor, Phil Murphy. <laughs> Congressman Frank Malone, Jr. Assembly <laughs> Speaker, Craig Coffin. <laughs> New Jersey DP Commissioner, Sean LaTorre. Middlesex County, we have Ron Rios, Director of the Board of County Committees. We also have Charles Kenny, County Commissioner. So per per Dan Boy Board of Education, we have Tashi Vasquez, Board of President, and also Stacey Peralta, Board Member. Community partners, we have Steve Jobin, CEO of the Rapidson Bay YMCA. We also have Sherry Goldberg, Director of the Community and Family Services from the George Renaissance Foundation. The engineering firm for this project, we have Robert Gregory, the Korea, branch managers, Suburban. Engineering. We also have Joseph Perennial, sub also from Suburban Engineering. Thank you for being here. <laughs> so I left anyone out. But thank you. Thank you for all of you uh, for being here. I want to thank you all for making the, fun the funding for this part possible. Her damn boy is a thriving city on a path to a brighter future. The improvements for, to this open space will be reimagined and allow our residents of all ages and ability to enjoy a healthier per damn way, especially our student athletes. The anticipated new high school to open its doors in 2024, it will expand its campus footprint with a field that they can call home. This $6 million project is funded by the New Jersey DEP's Green Acres Program, Per Dan Boy's Open Space Acquisition and Improvement through PCA, and a federal appropriation for community projects. These funds will allow for physical improvement in creating new sports fields, equipment, and recreational spaces, and more importantly, providing healthier quality of life. This is what we have been advocating for a very long time. And most grateful for announcing this today. And to be able to accomplish the funding is crucial. So thank you to each and every one of you. This park opened its doors in the mid-1980s. And since that time, there have been improvements for a walking path Park, bench, park benches, a foot on bridge, a floating dock, a gazebo, and aviation system to improve the quality of the pond's water and a security camera linked to the high school science lab built at that time. This funding award will allow us to create a mix of passive and active recreation opportunities, including organized sports fields.
and walking and bike, biking tra uh, trails. The field will be multi-purpose for softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and football. Additional improvements will include an expanded food court, sheltered dugouts, scoreboards, fencing, batting cages, and ecological trails. The trails will be purpose for walking, running, biking, and will lead to the pond used for fishing and paddle boating. This park will also be a model for all parks with smart initiatives, smart technology, including Wi-Fi, solar power, powered sensor technology, and a real-time live system camera system. It will go far beyond just giving connected generations what they want. It will also allow us to demonstrate to the public that meaningful and exciting changes is actually happening. We will be able to harness the energy of people and groups who over the years may have been disconnected. Exterior renovations for parks improvement have boomed with ground covering for playgrounds and multi-purpose fields. The new improvements will increase our use our users' hours while reducing their maintenance. We will be able to start additional programs, including a walking program, where all who visit will enjoy and connect to the park in different ways. These renovations represent our city's path to smart growth infrastructure that will ensure our social and economical growth and reinforce that our parks play a vital role in the physical well-being of our city and our residents. This park will be a powerful tool that will help address the critical urban infrastructure and public health issues for a better quality of life for residents and visitors alike. Thank you all. Thank you once again for making this possible. And now, it's my honor and privilege to introduce our governor, Governor Phil Murphy. Hello, it's good to be back in Perth Amboy, a community that I love coming to, and it represents in so many respects the soul of our state. And so I'm thrilled to be back. I know we were moved indoors by some challenging weather, but it's pretty nice in here. This mural's got very significant meaning to it, so honored to be here. It's always a pleasure, Helen, to be with you and to be in this great community. It is also uh, a great pleasure today to be with some folks who you've already, for the most part, recognized. I want to give Ken Ortiz a big shout out. <laughs> Ken apparently brought his fan club with him this morning, which is <laughs> I, I slipped them in 20. Uh, Ken is the superintendent of recreation, does an incredible job, great reputation, Ken, great to be with you. I'm incredibly honored to be with my congressman, not just the congressman and chairman, Frank Malone. Frank I'm aware we were meeting about Frank fighting for dollars for New Jersey, including for this very project. So I said to him a few minutes ago, I have not one, not two, but I have three engagements with our fabulous Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Protection, Sean LaTourette, today uh, to, to give you an idea of how seriously we take uh, the environment of the state. But literally, we're, we're, this is one of three uh, times we're together today. The local officials, I know Helman referenced some, some members of the Board of Education, also some of the private sector players. Totally cool to have Middlesex County's own, my partner, uh, just an outstanding leader, the Speaker of the General Assembly, Craig Coughlin. Is in the house. <laughs> and behind him, they've got his back today, the, both commissioners, including the director, and great friends and great leaders, Rob Rios and Charlie Kennedy. <laughs> and some folks you may not know, but you should know, uh, from the Department of Community Affairs, we have 
the director of the Division of Local Government Services, probably one of the most consequential positions in government, Jacqueline Suarez. As well as <laughs> and likewise, from the De Department of Environmental Protection, Sean's colleague, uh, the director of the Office of Environmental Justice, a hugely important position, Candace Perry. Is in the <laughs> so as Helen has already mentioned, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, glance through some of the details, but he really has gotten us off to a great start. Um, we're together today because the Veterans Memorial Youth League Complex, which has been for so long at the heart of this community, is about to get a whole slate of improvements that are going to elevate not just the games held here, but the players who play them. I think if the, when the Yankees find out about this project, that, that is going to improve their chances of keeping Aaron Judge. I'm going to go out and let him say that. Um, and with these upgrades, we are also giving all residents of Perth Amboy another reason to take pride in their historic hometown. We're talking about new artificial surface playing fields that are going to be able to stand up to the rivers of multiple teams and multiple games on any given day, and also multiple sports across every season. Helman mentioned them already, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and so on. This means better and safer playing conditions for young athletes, and by the way, fewer cancellations for their teams. We're talking about age-appropriate play areas for younger kids and paths for walking, running, or biking. This is gonna be one location where every resident of every age can find something healthy and active to do. May I also give a shout out to our members of law enforcement who protect us every day. We're also talking about multiple environmental improvements, again, as Helmut has alluded to, to address stormwater runoff and recharge. This is not only going to help protect our investment here, but also protect the community beyond the complex's border. And when the new Perth Amboy High School opens up next door, these fields will also be open to those students for physical education. It takes local leadership committed to investing the time and effort necessary to build something like this, something that will have such a tremendous impact on the city's quality of life for years to come. So to Helman and Ken and their colleagues, uh, they are showing that type of leadership in their work to get this project funded and moving forward. Turning these well-worn playing fields into fields of dreams is going to take an overall investment of about six million dollars. And by working together, we're helping meet this need with minimal impact on local taxpayers. From the state side, across the past two budgets, and again, I want to give the speaker a huge shout out here because I can't sign a budget until it's sitting in front of me on my desk passed by the legislature. We have invested a total of $2 million in open space funds through the Department of Community Affairs <laughs> to help move this project forward. And again, as Selman alluded to, through the Department of Environmental Protection, more than a million dollars is in the pipeline for the, from the Green Acres program. And I mentioned this earlier. Thanks to the great leadership of the chairman, Congressman Frank Pallone, another million and a half dollars is slated from the federal government. This is a local project, but it's going to have a broad impact. After all, these fields are being built, uh, while these fields are being built, rather, in Perth and Boy, they're going to be used by teams and athletes from not just this community, but by teams and residents from throughout Middlesex County who travel here. And the value of safe and well-maintained places for recreation is well documented. Active and healthy kids are much more inclined to become active and healthy adults. Moreover, youth sports teach leadership skills and show kids how success is much more likely to come when you work together. Sports also teach us that while we don't win every game, that's no reason not to go out every day and give it our all and to have fun while doing so. Places like Veterans Memorial are where these values are instilled. This is where a community comes together, plays together, and grows stronger together. Perth Amboy is a proud community with limitless potential. The improvements here at the Veterans Memorial Youth Sports Complex are going to make this another feather in Perth Amboy's cap. And Mayor, when these fields are done, I'm looking forward to coming by and kicking a few soccer balls with you. 
You know, before I hand things over to my congressman, every state has a bumper sticker. Some of them are low taxes, some of them are warm weather, you name it. Ours is the number one state in America to raise a family. And that defines so much of my all that we do. great health care, great location. It's a great quality of life, and projects like this feed right into that bumper sticker. I'm incredibly honored and proud to be here today. Please help me welcome the extraordinary chairman and congressman, my congressman, Frank Holman. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Governor, for all that you do and, and for bringing this money to, to Perth Amboy. Uh, I really just want to stress what you said about working together. I'm not going to repeat uh, what's going to be accomplished here uh, because I think we've already heard uh, a lot of details about it and how great it will be. But when the governor says working together, I mean, it's true. We have every level of government here today, whether it's the federal, it's the state, uh, or, it's the, or it's the county or the local. But I, wanted, I just want to, I have to say something about Mayor Cabo. You know, when he was first elected, uh, the first thing he did, um, even before he was sworn in, uh, was to call me up and say, you know, what can we do at the federal level uh, in terms of dollars to help uh, Perth Amboy? And he's been doing that every year. You know, last year we uh, got the federal dollars uh, for the library, and then when we said to him, uh, you know, what can we do in this year's budget, he said, well, let's see if you can get some money for this uh, Veterans Memorial Complex, which is what we're doing. And of course, at the state level, uh, the governor, and you know, we're so fortunate. You guys have the speaker of the uh, of the state assembly here, with Craig Coughlin, who's always looking out. We, we, what was it? I guess um, you know, one of my favorite things coming to Perth Amboy is to go uh, to the um, July Fourth celebration. Um, we got the thing over here about the Bill of Rights, but the proprietary house is another thing. Craig so hard on getting funding for it. Just, it looks great when we were there over July 4th with sort of the effects of that state funding as well. Um, I, I don't want to repeat everything that's already been said, but I, and, and, and the county. You look at Ron and Charlie, we know uh, what they do in terms of the county, particularly the open space. But I did want to say, uh, I think the most significant part of this in some ways, and that's why it's great that, that Sean uh, LaTourette is here with the DEP, is the fact that Kids that live in the city uh, have the opportunity to enjoy the outdoors more. Because think about it, I mean, uh, Perth Amp is such a, a beautiful place, right? On the bay, on the river, uh, there's so many opportunities for recreation. And when the governor was describing, or maybe the mayor was describing this, he mentioned uh, not only the fresh air, but the pond and fishing, and you know, kids getting outside for recreation. Um, that's one of the reasons why I think that her thing was so great because it's a city. I mean, I guess you could say it's a kind of inner city, but at the same time, uh, because it's on the water and there's so there's so many uh, opportunities to be outside, um, that uh, is very special. So with this, we're going to make it even more special. So thanks again. And my Thank you for being here. Highlights the 
importance of projects like this for the community. Uh, and we, we heard what, what incredible things are going to happen up there at this field. I know it's good. I have my new fancy Apple Watch. I have to keep count of my steps every day. So I'll be, uh, 10,000 is a lot. Uh, one of these days I'm going to make it. Um, and this will help uh, because there's going to be walking trails and things like that in addition to the fields. And it'll make, Ken will make your job a little harder and a little easier, right? You're going to end, there'll be no excuse now for not having more and more events, but they won't get rained out so it's easy, right? So it's all in all, it's a terrific project for that. But I want to take a second to talk about it, both the governor and, and the congressman have talked about uh, government at its best, and I think that's on a bit here today. Uh, and that starts with the leadership, particularly in this instance, the leadership of, of Mayor Kama. You know, it's, it's, I've become used to saying, well, it's another week, so what am I going to do with Perth Amboy today? We're rolling out another project. Uh, and, but the truth of the matter is that's, that's the kind of leadership that the mayor has brought. Um, you know, things like the Fayette Street Bridge, the train station, uh, revitalizing open spaces, making a commitment to get, you know, to out of the, the infrastructure, if you will, of Earth and will reflect the vibrant nature of the people and of the city. It is a remarkable uh, community, uh, and Mayor, you have really uh, taken this on her back to, to make sure that the, the things that make the town go uh, will match the vibrancy of the people. So thank you for that. Thank you for your leadership on this, and thank you for building an atmosphere where we work up and down. You know, Commissioner Kenny is here, Commissioner Director uh, Rios is here because you do so many good things in conjunction with the county. And of course, uh, you know, my colleagues, Yvonne and Joe, uh, Yvonne Lopez and Senator Lopez and Senator Vitale, both of whom send their best and couldn't be here today. But it was their, your insistence uh, that led them to be responsible for their efforts to make sure that the funding that you see today uh, was in the budget of the government graciously agreed to and so on. So, uh, <laughs> but that's how it works best. It works best when we work, when we have people who are of like mind and people who are committed to the same things and people who are, who are able to get things done and it works, it works up and down the chain. So we see that on, on full display today. Uh, so thank you for those efforts, thank you for that leadership, thank everyone who was part in, in making this possible. Uh, I can't wait for the groundbreaking. Thank you all for being here today. Appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for those great words and amen to all that both said both by you and Frank in terms of all levels of government working together and it begins right here at 10, so I want thank you. Uh, I mentioned him earlier and he got the biggest round of applause. Let me acknowledge him one more time and ask him to come up and say a few words, and that is the Superintendent of Recreation right here in Perth Amboy, Ken Ortiz. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, be totally honest with you, this morning I got up, didn't have anything prepared, got to work early, wrote some things down, but for the people that know me, I really don't need written words to kind of describe what I feel. Um, first of all, thank you to everyone in this room. Thank you to every person in this room, and you guys deserve a big round of applause. <laughs> and what I want to tell you is that, you know, I'm overjoyed about this project coming to our city because I know the benefits of it, but I'm kind of sad for you guys. And you might ask yourself why, because I'm going to be able to see all the great things that are going to happen here at Superintendent of Recreation. All the wonder, wonderful events that's going to go on, the kids laughing, crying, parents interacting. I'm going to get to witness that first, firsthand, and that alone for me is inspiration. To see that my community is going to have a wonderful place to get together. In a town that is a town of spirit, a town with fight. During the pandemic, out of this building, there were multiple pallets of food being distributed to the people in this community. And thanks to the city staff and our rec staff, they went from parks to being conduits for health and for food for our city members. And I'd like to tell you this. Um, I can talk about the benefits of parks and um, how they are for health and environment. And I can talk to you about the social importance of parks. But I just want to give you my experience. Well. Uh, my favorite thing is parks. When I was a young man, my father worked third shift, and on the weekends he would take us to the park. And a gentleman that worked third shift for 40 years. 
So you can imagine, I didn't really get to see my dad during the day because he was sleeping, and at night he was at work. But that man took the time out of his day to make sure that he took us somewhere. We were humble. We couldn't go to Six Flags or Kingsburg, but he made sure that we had somewhere to go. And all I remember is my father sitting there with his newspaper, and I think it was more of an escape for my mom than really for us, but he was there for us. And I, and I, and I, wanna, and I wanna tell you a story. Just a couple weeks ago, uh, I was at the park watching a girl softball game, and a young man comes up, maybe in his early, you know, late, late 20s, early 30s. He says, hey Kenny, how are you doing? And unfortunately, I can't remember every kid, you know? So I say, hey, how are you doing? One time I'll see, he says, you know, I wanna really thank you guys and I was, I was like, before, he says, when I was a young man, around 12, 13 years old, I lost my father. And it was in a time that, you know, I was just going into middle school, and I was having some trouble in school, and I was depressed. I really didn't have anybody there other than my mom, but my mom didn't understand what I was quite going through. The spring of the next year, after his father passed, he was playing baseball. And he said the coaches that stepped into his life was Coach David Orocho and Ramon Rivera, were a turning point for him because they stepped in where that void was for his dad. They were a mentor to that young man when he was a, when he was 12, 13 years old. And he remembers how they would take him out to Wendy's, which is not too healthy, but it's right behind the facility. <laughs> and how they would advise him and throughout the years, his high school years and things of that nature, how they were so impactful for him. And then he later on went to school for social work and he works for Adventist Youth today. So what I want to tell you is, so I want to tell you, even though, you know, it's going to be very pretty, turf fields, it's not about that. It's about the connection of people, where people can interact and be, uh, and be beneficial to their fellow man. I can just tell you my personal experience. I've lived on two, mainly two streets in this town my whole life, Park Avenue and North Park Drive. So I have a good connection. I live right across the street from there. So whenever there's any honey to-do list, I say, Mom, i got to go to, I got to go to work across the street. So I'm in this park all the time, and I'd like to tell you, thank you, because you don't know the impact that this is gonna make for our community. And I'm sure there's gonna be some funding grounds for other park projects, so just keep your bad boy in mind. And remember, we're a history of first, we're a very historic city, but once again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. So powerful, particularly the story about that young guy uh, and the coaches. Amen to that. Uh, just to ask Ken to make sure I have this right. This is looking like how many? I think spring of '24. That sound right to you? So a year from next spring, just in time to say play ball uh, and opening the high school at the same time. Not a bad, not a bad year in Perth Amboy coming up. So as they say in Hollywood, it's a wrap. I want to thank uh, Helen. To the whole team here, what a hugely important day. Uh, Perth Amboy is rocking. Take care, everybody.